My name is Connor Hare, I'm a writer and director and a co-founder of the VR production company Perception Squared. Um, today I'm going to talk about eye trace um, in 360 and uh, how to quickly and easily paint out your tripod in After Effects, Photoshop, and Premiere. Um, and to do this, we're going to use Skybox's 360 VR tools for Premiere and then also Skybox Studio for After Effects. Um, so first off, um, what is eye trace? Eye trace is used in traditional cinema for keeping the audience's attention in one area of the screen and making it more comfortable to watch something. Um, in 360, it works a lot differently because when someone isn't looking at what you want them to be looking at, they won't see it. It's going to be behind them. So it's a lot more important to guide your audience and keep things, keep the center of attention in a certain spot and kind of predict where they're going to look, basically. Um, so this is a project that we did for a YouTube um, a brand partner program. And uh, it basically starts off with kind of a host um, explaining the program. Uh, for the most part, in the beginning, we kept things pretty centered, um, just because there really wasn't a reason to have people searching for the host in the frame. Uh, we wanted to make sure you knew where he was at all times and just kind of allow you to explore the frame at your own pace. Um, so it stays pretty centered for the most part. About halfway through the piece, a bunch of inflatable dinosaurs attack YouTube's face. And uh, so in this particular shot, uh, our host is talking, and then he looks behind the viewer and sees a giant inflatable dinosaur. Um, in that shot, we predict that when he looks behind you, terrified, you're going to turn around and look at the dinosaur. Um, with that prediction, um, there's some new tools that are coming out. Um, I know Liquid Cinema is probably demoing it right now, but there's a there's a heat map view. Um, basically, if you use Liquid Cinema, it will give you a heat map readout of what your viewers are looking at in your frame. So you're able to make those predictions with a little more knowledge. Right now, we're basically trying something, trying it out in all the different mediums, seeing how it works, and uh, making changes to kind of make that better and make it flow easier. Um, how we do that is super simple. Um, there's a plugin for Metal. Uh, Skybox uh, for Premiere, their, uh, their Skybox uh, plugin package has a thing called Rotate Sphere. So you basically just drag that onto your shot, and then it has a tilt, a pan, and a roll. Um, the tilt and the roll you don't typically use too often, um, unless you're fixing a horizon. If you, if you didn't have a correct horizon in uh, when you exported from stitching, you would go back and you could make minor adjustments in here. Mostly what you would use it for is the pan, because it allows you to rotate this entire sphere um, without any stitch lines um, and basically reposition your center of focus for any shot. And it also it, it makes it easy to just do that very quickly and then even with uh, with Metal's uh, VR player you can actually see that live in VR in 360. So you can make a quick change, see how two cuts correlate as far as where you're looking and then come back and change it again. Um, but just having this in Premiere is really, really helpful because it makes it so you don't have to go to After Effects or your stitching software to make those corrections that are super essential for making sure your story flows and making sure it's a nice, viewable experience. Um, so let's take that off that one because that is not where we want them standing. Um, so basically in this shot, uh, dinosaurs run past frame. Uh, they're going to run down the hallway here. And we basically predict that everyone's going to follow the dinosaurs because there's nothing else to look at that's interesting besides them. Um, the next shot comes in still centered. Um, this shot, we kind of predicted people will kind of go over to this dinosaur here when it comes in and then most likely end their viewing of this shot over in this chaos over here because it has a lot more going on. Um, which cuts right into our next shot. Uh, two guys run past the door and they're being chased by the dinosaurs. Um, at the end of this one, we kind of split the difference between if people were going to stay at the door or if they were going to go to this uh, makeup artist reaction. Um, let's see if it loads here. Come on. Then we have dinosaurs on a golf cart, which is great. Um, <laughs> 
basically, if you're looking at the uh, makeup artist in the last shot, it cuts right to uh, our host running away here. And basically, this, this shot kind of has a built-in cut to it. Um, it doesn't cut per se, but the way we designed it is almost... I think when a viewer uh, looks to something different in a, in a shot at 360, it almost is like a cut because, uh, say if you're shooting this scene with traditional cameras, you do a shot on the host running away, and then you cut to the reverse, revealing the dinosaurs chasing him. In this particular case, you're seeing the host right away, you don't see the dinosaurs, and then you turn around and see them. That's kind of where the comedy comes in. Um, but yeah, so we cut, we cut straight from them to him. Most likely people turn around, look at the dinosaurs back here. We're thinking they're going to probably end the shot right about here. So that makes us, from the next shot, go to... Um, this shot in particular was a little tricky because, like I said with Horizon, you are really... It's not really best practice to roll the horizon in a shot, so really lining this up to match perfectly with that last shot would kind of disorient your viewer. It's going to make the world feel like it's on a slant. Um, and also, because of the transitions we use, we use these kind of uh, radial wipes to be kind of like a retro theme to the thing. Um, because of that, we actually can't move these circles uh, in 360 space, so we had to end center again, and it's also why in the beginning most of our stuff is centered as far as the post goes. Um, so basically that shot would end in this quadrant here, and then it goes to him being dragged away, and uh, that's that. Um, as far as other uh, parts of that package for Premiere, there's a uh, blur, denoise, glow, uh, sharpen, and then project 2D, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, all of those effects do pretty much what they say they do. Um, the only difference between using a standard like sharpen effect in Premiere is that if you do it in Premiere, it actually doesn't know that this is an echo rectangular shot, so it doesn't know it's meant for 360, and it's going to add artifacts on the edges. Um, that basically, when you put it back in a viewer, it wraps around and you get a big line there, which is not cool because you did perfect stitching and then suddenly you have a line. Um, and then you have to go back through an export again and so the button. Um, but all of those work. All of these uh, plugins know that you're using 360 footage and they'll act accordingly. Um, Project 2D, let me take it off this real quick. So this is how our, our title, um, the Project 2D uh, plugin basically allows you to add titles really, really quickly to 360 footage without going into After Effects. Um, this is the title we, we uh, chose for the project. Uh, we wanted the size of it to be about what it is in this screen right here when you're watching the video in 360 on YouTube. Um, so that actually worked out uh, pretty perfectly. I'll turn these off. Yeah. Oh, I did the rotate sphere. Just kidding. <laughs> So it basically makes it a lot smaller. That size will be about what it's supposed to be on YouTube to match that other frame. Um, and you can see it also kind of warps it a little bit. Um, it kind of bubbles it out. Um, basically that's so that when it wraps back to 360, that will end up being perfectly flat. Um, if you didn't have that correction on it, it would end up bubbling kind of towards you and just not look great. Um, it also makes it really easy to add, uh, usually you want to add uh, three, three to four titles around the circle so that wherever someone's looking at the end, you know they're going to see your title. Um, it's super easy to do that as well. I'm just going to pull out here. So you can actually just work in degrees. Um, you just go down to uh, rotate projection and then get a projection pan and just do 120 degrees and 240. And then you have them all perfectly evenly spaced. Uh, so this would be like 0 or 360, this is 120, this is 240. Um, super quick and you can export that and it's random. Um, that's, uh, the denoise is actually really nice too because you don't have to go to another program. A lot of these things just save you from going to another program. You're already coming from Stitching Program to Premiere. You're usually working with H.264 footage. So 
least amount of times you can compress it, the better. Um, yeah. So now, let's move on to tripod painting. Super exciting. Um, <laughs> it's a little technical, but it's really easy, and I'm like a writer and director. I have very little After Effects knowledge, but I can do this with, in like seven minutes. So, to someone time me. Um, so this is the tripod. In this case, it was a C-stand with a sandbag on it. Um, this is the shot. Um, and then, basically, you just want to choose uh, replace with After Effects compositions. I'm going to get through here up there. That was that. That was that. It's hard to buy that. Cool. Here's your shot. It's an echo rectangular. This is the standard video format for all 360 video. Um, this side basically wraps around and connects to the other side when you put it in the 360 player. Um, we're going to go to uh, effects, metal, then skybox converter. This basically, uh, you take your input, um, which you know is echo rectangular, and then you, you want your output to be a cube map. So what a cube map is, is basically all of the, this, this basically takes out the distortion of your shot um, so that you can add in graphics. If you wanted to add a logo at the bottom, you would just put a circle right here with your logo on it, and it would appear as a circle on the ground, um, perfectly distorted and everything once you once you convert this back to echo rectangular. Um, so to paint this tripod here, this C-stand, um, we're gonna go, Save frame. We're just going to export a frame for Photoshop and just paint it how you would paint anything in Photoshop. Um, As you can see, the, the C-Sand looks pretty normal for, like, if you just basically shot the C-Sand straight above. Um, you can do this any way you'd like to. Um, I usually start with a content-aware fill, because uh, it usually gets most of the job done. You can definitely fine tune that, and there's we, we did a couple other shots that were much more complicated. Than that. Um, uh, so then you go ahead and import that back into After Effects. I can find it. Drag it below that shot. I like to start with it below just so you can see the tripod still. Uh, you're going to go to your mask tool, mask that out. And then you can drag it above one. Go here, go to masks. Uh, you want to feather it out a little bit. Not until you start seeing it, obviously. Um, another thing you want to keep in mind too when you're doing this is that if anyone, if any objects cross that, uh, you're gonna basically see them disappear um, because it's a still. So, kind of scrolling through and seeing like, okay, there's a little shot of there. We probably want to feather it a bit more. Um, make sure that nothing crosses. If something does cross, you probably have to go in and do custom roto for that particular object. 
So that's looking pretty good. Yeah. Um, so then we want to go ahead and duplicate that. And everything's housed in one thing. And then we're going to reapply the metal uh, skybox converter. And it's just going to know that it's a cube map and then convert it back to echo rectangular. So now you have echo rectangular shot, floor is completely painted, and it goes back to 360. Everything will look totally perfect and undistorted. Uh, so let's save that. Move back into here. And then import that. It's not super essential. Um, basically, you import that back in, and you would just drag it in on top of your shot, and then you have you basically do that for every shot in your whole sequence. Um, one of the harder ones we did was this one. Um, because of the like motion behind it, um, there's a lot of like kind of moving light on the the golf cart. Um, we we specifically did our uh, stitching so that this would cut right at the uh, hole of the golf cart. And then the final piece that we did looks like this. Um, and it still has, has a little bit of error still there, but when you're looking at it in 360, it's, you're not going to use most of that stuff. But basically, we just tried to make it look like something that belonged in the scene. We put a little like details in on the handle to make it look like it was just a longer handle. Um, there's like there's probably like four Photoshop like pictures on top of the handle because we're perfectionists. Um, <laughs> And uh, but basically, you just want to make it look like something in scene. People aren't going to pay attention to it if it looks like it belongs. Um, if it looks like a tripod, they'll probably look at it. Um, what was this shot on? This was shot on a back-to-back -back GoPro rig. So it's similar to this. It's just using only two cameras. Um, they're both horizontal. Um, and we did that mainly just because we, we knew we were going to have a lot of things crossing close to the stitch lines. Um, if we had used this, we would have had to do four times the work that we did with the two camera rig. Uh, we get about the same resolution. Um, so, yeah, because we had a lot of dinosaurs crossing really close to the camera, and when we did that, we had to like jump, jump cut the, the stitch line so that we didn't get any errors on the cross. Um, and I actually did those in Premiere because we found it a little easier to do than doing it in Auto Panel. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it on that. Um, overall, the especially the Premiere plugin uh, for metal or for uh, the metal plugin for Premiere, um, it just makes it really easy to make a lot of iterations on your projects and be able to test things. A lot of this, all of this stuff is like about experimentation, and no one knows the right way to do it yet, and we're all kind of trying to figure out how editing works, and how shooting works. And, uh, these tools just allow you to try try more experimentation quicker, which I think is great, and it lets you learn how to tell stories in 360. So, yeah. Thank you. So thank you. Yeah. If anyone has any questions, or yeah. anything. Thank you very much, Connor. Yeah, if anyone has questions, I'm sure Connor will be happy to answer them one-on-one -on -one at the workstation. And I'd like to remind everyone that we have a contest, scan your badge, you have a chance to win one year of Adobe CC, a $3,000 graphics card, and other prizes <laughs> from our tech partners. Thank you very much. Thanks, Connor. Yep. Thanks, Alex. Great job. We love the work you're doing. It's really fantastic. Thanks a lot for sharing this. Yeah, thank you. That was awesome.